Greetings, YouTube. A lot of you probably don't remember the era of Tipper Gore, Al Gore's wife. Um, she was part of a move to get content advisory labels put on music albums. Yes, actual albums back when they were made of vinyl in the shape of discs about this big. Um, and the goal here was to allow a parent to know before listening to an album, so you don't have to purchase it, you just glance at the cover, what content would be in it and whether they should allow their child to buy it. Because this was, this was also the area, era when we had the rise of rap music and hip hop. This is when it really began to move. And songs like, for example, Cop Killer, really upset a whole lot of white people. How dare a black person speak out against police brutality? Um, that's just, you just, that isn't allowed. So these labels, these content advisory labels, became a major controversy. People testified in Congress, and of course, we have them now. Um, and the goal behind them was, again, to allow parents to make a judgment. The consequence of them was that some chains, like Walmart, just didn't carry albums that had them. So while it was not an act of censorship or the curtailing of First Amendment rights on the part of the government, it was simply a labeling of First Amendment content, it ended up being a government-sanctioned censor censorship. But because it allowed white parents in middle America to make judgments about mostly black music, people were okay with it. And they just kind of accepted it. Because those wild black people were just scaring America so bad. Jumping forward to the 21st century, and a phrase we hear frequently, particularly if you're on the internet, and particularly if you are on Tumblr, is the term trigger warning. Now, trigger warning was originally designed as a warning for military veterans who had undergone incredible trauma, had suffered, were suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, and could literally be triggered into doing an, a, a violent act if external stimuli was to reignite old thought patterns in their heads. How often that actually happened is probably incredibly small, but it also could be used, for example, for a, a veteran who did not want to be exposed to, say, fireworks. And they actually have signs you can put on people's lawns that say, I'm a veteran, please don't fire fireworks around me. Um, and that is an act of respect flat out because this we sent this person into harm's way they are were traumatized by the experiences i believe it's 25 percent of all veterans end up with ptsd of some variety um and to offer that respect seems to be an incredibly small gesture i read something today about the term f trigger warning that really resonated with me and I actually forgot to write down who wrote it. I apologize. It was on, on a Metafilter thread. And they were replying to someone whose name is Eyebrows. But it says, um, here's, the, here's the, uh, the statement. I agree that something about the phrase trigger warning sets people off and people are much less likely to object when you say something like, just heads up that this movie has a graphic rape scene, a content advisor. But the discussion about trigger warnings, I think, is not just about the phrase. It's about the phrase as a stand-in for the idea that young people, <clears throat> especially young pe uh, women, because this is a highly gendered discussion, uh, are weak and self-indulgent for thinking that their emotions are valid and their sensitivities should be respected. They are bad people for thinking they're entitled not to be hurt gratuitously. They should realize that their feelings are silly and their trauma is not legitimate and they should deal with the fallout quietly, alone, on their own time, without complaint. And I might add, without having to concern the person doing the gratuitous harm that they themselves may be committing an act of cruelty. And a trigger warning isn't asking someone, I want this book banned. It's a warning so they can be prepared. All right, there. I there's a channel called Threadbanger here on YouTube. I was a fan of the Threadbanger uh, team um, of crafters before they ever hit YouTube, um, 
And occasionally, Rob will put warnings up there because his videos have blood in them. It's not real blood, it's fake blood, but he, it's pointlessly and grotesque. I don't enjoy it. So if he throws one of those up, I don't watch the video. Even though he does get a view count. Yeah, clever boy. But um, that is an act of kindness, of respect for others. Because some people, even if it's comedy, don't necessarily want to watch this. Asking to just allow someone to prepare themselves so that they can be they can they can they can girdle their emotional loins, if you will, for something that could be traumatizing to them. That isn't a complex issue. And to my mind, it relates right into using pronouns that people want used for themselves. It's all about an act of respect. And this writer nailed it when it came to the idea that we dismiss the young and feminine and tell them that their emotions are silly and invalid and their trauma is not legitimate because society does not want to face the fact that society traumatizes people by its very nature because our society is twisted. So rather than face that, people say, oh, trigger warning, that's that's PC crap. I don't need that. If you say content advisory, suddenly an entire generation of people go, oh, yeah, 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 you're right. But content advisory doesn't have the same emotional impact as does trigger warning. Just as shell shock had more impact than battle fatigue. I'm stealing that from George Carlin. And another side that is related to this when it comes to this idea that the phrase trigger warning bothers some people because they consider it some mammy-pammy, squishy, feel-good crap is the idea of safe spaces. Now, people don't want safe spaces. I've said this before. Safe spaces exist because the prevailing social structures are oppressive to some members of our society microaggressions and actual overt aggressions and that some and and the oppressed groups want a space where they are safe where that for a moment of respite they can hide from the slings and arrow of outrageous misfortune and some people think well that's horrible that's 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 just wrong well, maybe if society wasn't being aggressive on the micro and macro scale to groups in our in, in the world, to women, to minorities, to to whether it's religious, <clears throat> sexual, uh, gender, whatever, what have you, if society wasn't being crap, safe spaces wouldn't be necessary. But the term safe space makes people some people think that you're trying to be isolationist. That you're trying to, you're asking for special rights. No, they're asking to not be oppressed, to not have people be aggressive to them just for a few minutes. Just for that place where they can go with others of their kind and not have to deal with racism and bigotry and oppression for a little while. And the aggression in society is so great that the very idea that they ask for this, that they set these places up, is somehow seen as offensive to the aggressor. That somehow the aggressor is is harmed by the fact that others there are the other others in the universe that want to say, no, 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 you don't get to be aggressive to me all the time. Somehow the aggressor is slighted by that. How dare you say? You have the right to not have me in your face 24-7. How dare you do that? So whether it's trigger warnings or safe spaces, society is having a hard time wrestling with these things because groups that have traditionally been oppressed are speaking out and saying that they want their spaces. They want the warnings. They want to be able to deal with the world in a healthy manner and because the world will not provide them an environment that is healthy, they are going to do what they have to do to create the healthiest environment of their own. 
asking for content advisories, asking for safe spaces, creating safe spaces. This is not revolutionary. This is not a burden on society. All society has to do is stand back and shut up and let people deal with their trauma and their pain and their oppression as best they can. Because society, apparently, isn't concerned with not causing trauma and pain and oppression. And if you even suggest that they've done this, society will get more aggressive all over again.